Welcome to the 2023 USCA AC National Championships. Tom and Loretta Cooper are the tournament directors at the NCC in West Palm Beach, and Johnny Mitchell is the tournament manager. This graphic of some of the common leaves in AC was from the tournament instructions, and that top center one called the Tea Lady Leave is really the delayed sextuple leave, and we're about to see that demonstrated. This is a round of 16 match between Matthew Essick, who has now achieved single name status, along with Beyonce, Pele, Tiger, and of course Reg. He's the reigning golf croquet world champion and was runner up in the last AC World Championships. He is the number one player in the U.S. His opponent is Stuart Lawrence, who's been his teammate on international teams and has a distinguished track record of his own. Matthew won game one, 26 to 23, and then got in with the fourth ball in the second game when our eagle-eyed videographer Brian Hovis noticed that he was setting up a wired leave at hoop one. I think whether you set up the opponent's balls this way or Northwest, southeast instead depends a little bit on what happens when you rush back from hoop six. Clearly, you don't want to leave either of his balls a shot on hoop one. And if his balls were for one and four back, then his hoop one ball might be placed where Matthew has placed pink in order to lengthen the shot on Matthew's back ball, which he'll leave down in the vicinity of corner three. This orientation of the opponent balls does require extra care to make sure both of those balls have an open shot into the corner three area with no furniture in the way. And of course, this is his last chance to bail out if the wiring isn't falling in place. He would just set up the rush to one back, continue his break, and then do a contact lead. But he's happy with the wiring, so he'll rush his back ball down to the hoop three corner three area. And while he's on his way down there, I want to thank our sponsors, the USCA, Chris Barley, and Stuart Price. This is still a significant volunteer effort, but the sponsorship makes it a lot more feasible. The standard approach to the modern sex tuple would put that white ball a lot closer to corner three. Matthew said he leaves it out here sometimes in case the opponent decides to corner instead of taking the tea lady shot, in which case he's in better shape to rush his forward ball over to one back. Making sure there's no furniture in the way. He's going to put pink out there because if Stewart shoots and misses, his ball will be in corner three. Matthew then turns around with white, rokays that corner three ball, and then has enough room to stop shot the opponent ball to one back and still get a good rush on pink to one back. Being able to put the opponent ball as an escape ball at hoop two increases the chances of getting the one back peel either before one or before two. And just in case it's not clear, the whole point of a sextuple peel is to give the opponent no shot other than the one Stuart Lawrence is about to take to get back in. Stuart's only real choice now against Matthew is to take the tea lady at that white ball. If he were to corner, the only option would be corner four and even there, if Matthew gets a good escape ball at hoop two, he will dig out that corner four ball and do the sextuple anyway. Some of this stuff I knew already, mainly from Chris and Jenny Clark's website, but my latest source is Robert Fulford's chapter on the sextuple peel in Beyond Expert Croquet. I highly recommend it.
Matthew is working on making the sextuple appeal a reasonable tactical choice. And he said, especially because they're playing in Hurlingham this summer, where the easy conditions make the sextuple almost a necessity at the very top level. So far this year, Robert Fletcher's done three, Reg Bamford's done five, and Matthew has done four, along with Stephen Molliner. In this tournament, he has two sextuples, and he actually lost a game where he attempted a sextuple. Because, again, at this level, if your sextuple breaks down, you are going to lose. That doesn't include the games where you attempt a sextuple, you fail it, but you go ahead and complete the break to the peg instead of contact leap. You still have a chance in that situation, but it's not recommended. This is the other reason for leaving White closer to corner three, but the honey badger doesn't care. A t-shirt he used to wear a lot when I first met him at age 15. If you look at diagrams of the classical sextuple peel, pink and white would have been put a lot closer together down on the north boundary. In this configuration, again, this lets him stop shot, green over to hoop two, and then a good rush on pink to one back. The goal here, of course, is to rush pink into peeling position at one back so he can get the one back peel now while he goes to the hoop one pioneer. If that happens, though, they pretty much chalk it up to good luck. The top players, of course, get lucky a lot more frequently than the rest of us for a good reason. He's setting up to do the one back peel before he makes hoop two. He does that so that he can send a peely all the way down to two back on the peel stroke. So he would have preferred that green be east or west of where it is by a foot or two because there it's going to get in the way.
So you can see that in addition to impeding the Peely's progress to two back, that position to green also increases the chance of hampering White shot on green and making hoop two. You might think Green goes all the way to hoop four as a pioneer, but instead he's going to put it where he can use it as an escape ball with which to get to hoop four after he does the two back peel. Setting up Brown for the rush back to two back is probably the most important hallmark of the modern or accelerated sextuple, whether it's just to get to the Peely or to use it as a remote pioneer. And as players have gotten more comfortable with this in the sextuple realm, it's transformed triple peel play as well. I've made the claim that long accurate rushes can be the most important strokes in croquet and that is nowhere more true than in sextuple peeling. Because he can make four off that green escape ball, Brown goes where he can make five off it from the region of two back because he knows he's going to have to come back here after hoop four whether he makes this peel or not.
The goal here is to get a rush on green back to corner one so he could put green at hoop six as a pioneer and land the position for the rush peel on two back. But going through the hoop by only a foot intentionally really runs the risk of stuffing that hoop, so he'll find an alternative. Either a 90 degree split shot from there or a rush to pioneer position and a takeoff. We sometimes talk about prioritizing on croquet shots. You set up the shot and then you focus on the one that you think is more important. In a sextuple, they're both important. One of the hallmarks of a truly expert player is rescuing a triple peel gone awry. Even more so, a sextuple peel gone awry. Because he has a well-placed Pioneer at six in green, he can afford to rush Brown back over to the west boundary so he can pick up the P. Lee and take it to hoop four and at the same time position Brown to keep the peeling turn going. This is going to be fun to watch. I think in the classic sextuple he might have thought now about putting Brown down by one back or out in the middle there someplace so it could serve as a pioneer after six.
But again, a hallmark of the accelerated sextuple is using escape balls as remote pioneers. And that's the purpose that Brown is going to serve after he makes six, comes back to peel three back, and then he'll make one back off of Brown. Just like getting old, sextuple peels are not for the faint of heart. I only have personal experience with the former, of course. Not what most of us would call a good one-back pioneer. 
But he's got it right where he wants it. I'm guessing that Brown is now the escape ball for after the four back peel and the pioneer for three back. Just verifying that pink has been successfully peeled through three back. He's lining up the four-back peel. He doesn't expect to make it, but he wants to get it close. And you might think that in a shot that long, he's planning on about eight or nine feet of pull. But this is really more a thick takeoff than a split shot. That may not be any pull at all in this one. The great ones make their own luck. I think Matthew's the only American player focusing on sextuples right now. Ben Rothman did six in 2016, I think. Sharif Abdelwahab has done one in AC, and he's done one in American rules, which is mind-boggling. I think Matthew is easing his way into joining Reg and... Robert Fulford, Stephen Moliner, players like that who can use sextuples as a realistic tactic because they finish them off enough that it makes sense.
position in green so it can be the escape ball after the penult peel and the pioneer for four back at the same time. And the fact that he can rush peel this one makes it a lot easier, but it just makes up for the bobble he had at two back. And now to get a dolly rush on his three back pioneer. Managing the position of the object ball and running the hoop under tight control are also pretty critical to a successful sextuple. And now with this excellent rush, he has three hoops and two peels for what's a basically a standard finish to a delayed triple peel. You might ordinarily think that Green should go to Pioneer position at Rover, but because he still has to get the penult peel, Green is going to be more useful to him somewhere around the peg.
Not only is an angled Irish peel tricky as can be, he gets a fabulous result out of it. Rush to the approach line, one of Danny Honeycutt's favorite teaching points. So if you enjoyed this, and how could you not, give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Matthew with a gorgeous sextuple, the first we've had live on our YouTube channel. Take Stuart Lawrence two games to none in the round of 16 to move on to the quarterfinals. Thanks again to the USCA, Chris Barley, and Stuart Price for their sponsorship. There's more to come from the 2023 AC Nationals.